little worried about Tom and Bruce Arians, that partnership? Well, yes, only from the standpoint of their particular relationship and whether or not they're on the same page. I still believe in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even though their pass defense gives me cause to pause. But the biggest thing for me is Bruce Arians. Um, I think they need to run the ball a little bit more. You got Ronald Jones, you got Leonard Fournette back there. Run the football a little bit more. Do something with them, number one. Number two, I think it's one of those situations where, un unfortunately, you see Bruce Arians saying stuff about practice and things of this nature and how we got to work out. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? You know, you've had plenty of time. You know that Tom Brady was going to be there. You've had plenty of time to work with him where y'all should be a bit more in sync than you appear to be at this particular moment in time. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it can certainly be better, particularly against stiffer competition, which has not been the case. And so when I look at it, Clearly, Tom Brady can't be throwing seven interceptions in the last four games. It's very un-Tom Brady-like. It's inexcusable. It's unacceptable. I think he knows that. But I also think that we have to look at the fact that he's trying to make up for some deficiencies on the part of the defensive side of the ball in terms of the points that they're willing to give up, ranking 24th against the pass. Some of the things they've done schematically that has been a bit of ride at NFL aficionados like Ryan Clark and others have pointed out between Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians. And then for Bruce Arians to go in post-game conferences and to say, some of the things that he says at times you're just looking at him and he's like what the hell are you talking about because as a head coach you have far more responsibilities than just the quarterback and when you see some of the things that are going on collectively with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers each week we're pointing to things that Tom Brady would not have had to deal with if he were playing in New England because we know that the meticulous tendencies of Bill Belichick would have had those things covered and he would not have had to concern himself with such things. That's not the case now, and that's what I think we need to point to. <sighs> You're worried about the Brady Marriott's partnership now? Everybody, they're right where they're supposed to be. They're seven and five with an easy schedule coming up. The over-under for wins for the Bucks was nine and a half because Jameis, who threw 30 interceptions to 112 points to the other team, had him seven and nine. And we all said the same thing. You just get a quarterback who's not going to turn the ball over. They're going to be at least nine and seven. Changed two of those games, right? I mean, Jameis also led the league in yards through 33 touchdowns. But by and large, a more competent quarterback would win another game or two. Then, and you say, you know what? Brady's even a little better than just another quarterback. Not much, but a little better than just another quarterback at this stage in his career. Let's call it nine and a half. And guess what? I took the over at nine and a half. I said figure 10, right? Oh, Max, that's way too low, said a lot of the talking heads, right? No, no, 10 is about right. And guess what? They're going to have about 10 wins this year, just like they were supposed to. Now we're worried about Arians and Brady. Bruce Arians, Mr. No Risk It, No Biscuit, and Tom Brady, Mr. Dink and Dunk. I said this, everyone said this, going, dear, how's that going to work? To the tune of about a 10-win season, and which is good. That's good. Brady's 156 years old, right? Like, no, is Bruce Arians the greatest <laughs> coach of all time? No. Bill Belichick is the greatest coach of all time. Brady didn't want to be coached by Belichick anymore. Belichick didn't want to coach Brady anymore. They separated. Belichick, without a team, is one game under 500. A couple bad breaks, or he'd be two, three games over 500. Brady, with the most stacked team you could imagine in the NFC, is right now seven and five, which is where he's supposed to be. Don't say now is there some no risk it, no biscuit, dink and dunk. They're seven and five. Arians ain't Belichick. There's no new information. We knew this coming in. Nah, see, see, Max, you're looking at it a totally different way. You're, you're thinking dink and dunk Tom Brady. You're not thinking I've been able to morph into anything I needed to be for my team for the last two decades, Tom Brady. Yeah. They had to dink and dunk when it was Wes Welker. They had to dink and dunk when it was Julian Edelman. They had to dink and dunk That's maybe when you had some of these guys who weren't household names. But when they had Randy Moss, they went over the top. When Rob Gronkowski became In 2007? The, number one, uh, tar the, the number one target for the New England Patriots, they attacked the seams. And so Tom Brady has been able to always do whatever was needed of him with his skill players. So when he decided to become a part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, here's what everybody saw. Everybody saw 5,000 yards passing, less turnovers because it was Tom Brady. So everyone expected this thing to work and, and be and happen right away, but it hasn't. And aside from it happening right away, everyone expected it to ascend. 
right? Everyone expected it to get better as the season went along. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be playing at a high clip, at a high level as the season wound down, and they could be looked at as an NFC contender or an NFC favorite in the playoffs. And that's not what we have from this team. And so, yes, I have an issue. So, yes, I worry about their relationship because I wonder who's going to give. Because now we understand Tom Brady can't do it. This is not a way that Tom Brady can play at this point in his career and be successful. And that's okay because you're right. He is 43 year old, 43 years old. There is some things that happen a little slower for you. You do have to muscle the football down the field. So who makes the adjustment? Mm. Do we run Ronald Jones mm. more, who averaged 7.3 yards a carry yesterday, who has shown explosiveness, who has shown ability to create big plays? Do we do a little bit of different things with Chris Godwin and Cameron Brake and Rob Gronkowski low and allow Mike Evans to work the deep part of the field. If they can't come to that conclusion, if there isn't that compromise made in this relationship, this team will be one and done in the playoffs. And I don't care who you are. I don't care that the fact that Max Kellerman took the over on nine wins and now he feels right. Tom Brady went here to win a championship. Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay to have these kind of weapons. And if things don't work out, if they don't get to the NFC Championship, if they don't push for a Super Bowl, this is a failure this year. Now, you can retool and try to come back and do it next year, but this relationship isn't working well now, and I'm concerned. Well, there's a couple of things that I wanted to attack Max about. Number one, the over-under. Have you ever seen someone win nine and a half games? So if you're going to pick 10, That's you're going to pick nine. So if you're going to pick oh, you're going to pick, oh, pick, oh, no, pick, oh, pick 10. You're going to pick 9. Nobody wins nine and a half games. Okay? You know so that's number one. I'm just saying. I'm just, oh, you'll ears. get your chance. Over, under. You'll get your chance. Did I not say I would speak and come to you? I do believe I said that. I said I'll speak and I'll come right to you. Okay? So that's number one. You're not winning. It's not over. Gosh, under. I love this over. Show. I'll take the over. I had him winning 11 games. I understand if you said 11 or 12. But saying 10 or duh is either 10 or 9. Over or under. Because nobody's winning nine and a half games. Right. Nobody's winning half a game. Okay, that's number one. Number two, that's, you sit you up there and you the jumped point, out right? of your seat when Ryan Clark, you, you, you jumped out of your seat when Ryan Clark said when they had Randy Moss, they went over. You said 2007? Well, in 2016, they won the Super Bowl. In 2017, yeah. they lost with him throwing for 500 yards. In 2018, they won the Super Bowl, and they lost the wild card last year. So the last four years, he's been to the playoffs. Three of those four, he went to the Super Bowl. Two of those three, he won the Super Bowl, and that was a decade removed from 2007. Okay, there's so a lot William to respond Clark to right there. You, and he's talking about what they did depending on the personnel they had. I would like to believe that the resume he had would warrant consideration. In other words, this is what he was working with. He did this when he was working with this. He did this when he was working with that. Okay, I, I, there's a lot to respond to there. Let me try and remember it all. Number one, Stephen A., are you aware of the way over-unders work? Nine and a half games, the odds makers are saying, do you want to take ten or do you want to take nine? That's why it's nine and a half. No one <laughs> thinks they're going to win nine and a half games unless maybe you do. I don't that's know. what I said. But ties don't ca count as half that's a win. That's what I said. Okay, that's how it works. So, no, I'm so, saying, so you're saying I took the I'm over. Saying you're saying I thought, that. I thought 10 wins, but I didn't think more than 10 wins. I was hearing, oh, they're going to win 12 games. That's and still the no, over. No, they're not. I, I explain. I exp yes. But it's the way over. The point was, <laughs> well, I said like 10 sounds games. about right. And people who are talking about this, a 12 or 13 win team, were out of their minds. Because when you talk about what Tom Brady did 11. in 2017, by the way, he was dinking and dunking more in 18 than he had at any point in his career, right? And then when they won the Super Bowl, Stephen A., it was the lowest scoring Super Bowl in the history of Super Bowls. That's it. Lowest scoring. Yeah, he rode the one. defense in the running game. And then that the following one. year, he didn't put up numbers. He was missing receivers every which way. And all we heard is he didn't have weapons. And, in fact, he basically tweeted or Instagrammed at me, right? Look, the 61 miles an hour on the radar gun. What cliff? Well, as Ryan said, as you get older, you can still get mustard on the ball if you muscle it. You won't be able to put it exactly where you want to anymore, which is obviously what was happening. His QBR puts him 17th in the league, which is fine, except that's in the middle of the pack, except that he's got weapons everywhere you look. So the fact of the matter is Tom Brady, I would say, is still a tick above average because he is Tom Brady. 
Oh. You know, he is, he, he's, he's going to get you big third downs when he needs to, I think, more often than not. He will make good decisions more often than not. He has weapons all around him, and therefore, even though it's not a perfect fit with the coach, which we knew going in, he might win right. 10 games, which is what the odds hey, makers Max, basically that's, said. That's, that's, a, that, that's a soliloquy. It was very eloquent. Uh, you know, just, just sitting there saying a lot, don't say a damn thing. Why am I saying that? Didn't you <laughs> apologize <laughs> to the national television audience <laughs> this weeks ago for saying that there was no clip? Ooh. Molly, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you ask Max to apologize he that. and he, he apologized he was because there was no clip? No, I never apologized. Yeah. Is that not true? Yeah. Yeah. I never apologized. Yes, no, no, it no. made news. No, no, no. I never apologized. Go check it. I never said sorry. That, that you know, like, but oh, you admitted you were wrong. <laughs> you admitted you were wrong. But that, but but wait yeah, a minute. But wait a minute. Wrong being wrong and being cliff. sorry, uh -huh. being being wrong and being sorry. I'm sorry. I have to explain this to you. Oh my But bad. those are two different my things. Bad. I apologize. No, that, no, no, I get it. That's a good apology. That's a good apology. That's a good apology. Because you guys, I want to apologize. Hold on. I want to apologize. Be quiet. I want to apologize. I want to apologize to Max Kellerman. My bad. I'm sorry. You didn't say sorry. You said I was Why would wrong. I say sorry? My bad. I'm sorry, Max Kellerman. Yeah. I mean, we just all thought you were me. sorry. I mean, oh, you said you didn't Time say out. I'm sorry. There's, there's you said I'm wrong. Sorry. What I was wrong about. That, it wasn't right. an apology. I have nothing. My bad. My bad. I had I nothing to apologize for. But but. What okay, I said was I there it. would be a cliff. What a cliff you means. Didn't say hold on. So. What a cliff means. What a cliff means. What a cliff means is oh, you're you going you along wrong. at a very high rate. Did and you say you were You're going wrong. along at a ve about the cliff, Stephen A. <laughs> we don't need the definition. He's going Max, along at a very know what a cliff is. Is. Yes, you do. A cliff? Did yes, you, you do. You at I have a master's degree. You don't need to tell me what a cliff is. Stephen A., I know you're scared of the point, but please let me make it anyway, and then you can be embarrassed you when you can't answer points. it, okay? You don't make any points. You, you, That's you, the problem. This is, this is called keep away that you're doing. No. Ball control. Did you say you were but wrong? I already answered that question. Uh, did you say you were I wrong? I already answered that question. How many times uh, do you want to answer the wrong? question? I, I, 